Hello. Welcome to our virtual edition of Harvest Fest here at the Museum of the Grand Prairie in Mohammed. Who likes apples? Oh, wow, they're so delicious. The easy way to eat them is just to take a bite. We can also make apple pies or apple crisp. We can turn them into apple juice, apple cider. We can dry them. Lots of ways to enjoy apples. Well, in the 17th century, which is the 1600s, the colonists introduced apples to North America. In the 18th and 19th centuries, growing apples became very important because apples were a staple crop, which means you have to have them to be able to survive over the winter time. Some of you have heard of spelling bees, where people get together and spell lots of their words, which makes it kind of fun. Or you might have heard of quilting bees, where ladies and girls got together to do their sewing and make it more of a party. And there were also apple bees, not the tasty restaurant, but apple bees where families would come together and work through the process of turning apples into all the foods that would be able to continue through the winter time. Well, in the 19th century, which is the 1800s, industrialization and iron helped an explosion of inventions, including some for apples. I'm going to show you some of those inventions now. These objects are in our permanent collection, and before I touch them, I need to put gloves on my hands. Now, why do you suppose I do that? Well, keeping the dirt from our hands off of them is one good reason, but the more important reason is because our skin is oily, and if I gently touched all of these and got the oils from my fingers onto them, that would not be good for the objects. The first one I have to show you is actually a homemade apple peeler from around 1850. It's made from wood, has a little bit of iron on it, and it does have the three prongs for the apples, like today's apple peelers. The second one I'm going to show you was patented in 1868. This has some gears on it. It has the three prongs for the apple. And it has a handle that will turn the gears. And the third one I have to show you was patented in 1881. Now, if you have an apple peeler today, it looks very similar to this one, doesn't it? Has this kind of pole for the apple, has the three prongs, has the handle, the little screw where you can put it onto the table. So this was in 1881. Now, before I do the apple peelers, I'm going to move these out of the way so that the apple juice does not spray on these, which would not be a good thing to have happen. There we go. So in 1909, Walter Ross patented the current modern apple peeler. It hasn't changed very much at all. And some of you have one that look exactly like this. So I'm going to demonstrate this to you now. I will put it on the table. And we will latch it down, and we'll try one more time. There we go, and the suction holds it down just fine. I'm going to take one of my apples, and to pull this back out of the way, there we go. Put the small end onto the prongs. And now I'm going to go round and round and round. There it goes. This is really a fun job to do. There we go. I'll take off my apple. Now, I like the peels. They almost always come in one complete peel. And I've kept some to hang on some of my shelvings and it makes a very pretty decoration. The core will come off. Sometimes it breaks, but we don't usually eat that part. And then in the middle, we can see the seeds. And did you know, in the center of every core is a star. And now, when I take my apple 
has this nice little spiral shape to it. Look at that pretty decoration. You could dry this too and hang it up. So if you love apples, you love apple pie and apple crisp, and you don't have one of these, put it on your Christmas list. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you get to enjoy lots of tasty apple treats this fall, and I'll see you again soon.